Hello all, this video is going to look at how to answer A01 questions for A-level psychology. So firstly, we've got to understand what the command words are for A01. So I've put a little link to the AQA command words list down below. And also, you've got to understand, anytime it says a word like outline, explain or describe, it's going to be looking for your A01 knowledge. Now, this could ask you to outline your knowledge of a theory, therapy, a study or findings. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at a few different key tips I'd give you when answering A01 and also a few past pupils answers so we can start to see what good A01 questions really look like. Now, there's a range of different A01 questions they can ask you. It could be a multiple choice question. It could be a two marker. But what you need to understand is anything four marks and above, you will be put into one of these level descriptor grids. Now, I've got um, an A01 level descriptor in front of us here. And this is for a specific question, but the key points inside the level descriptor will stay the same no matter what A01 question it's for. So there's three things that they're really looking for. One is your clear and accurate knowledge. Secondly, that your answer is coherent, makes sense, flows nicely. And also you're using effective terminology throughout your answer. So there are the three things we're going to be looking at as we go through this particular video. So my first tip when you're going into an A01 shorter question would be to highlight the keywords in the question. Firstly, look at command words. Does it ask you to outline, state, identify? You know if it says identify or state, they're looking for just a short answer. Very quick, get to the point. Whereas this question asks you to describe it. So I know I'm going to have to elaborate on the information that I'm giving. It's also talking about CBT. So I'm going to highlight that and also highlight the word depression because that will remind me to keep coming back to it throughout my answer. Now there are a few keywords in AQA psychology which seem to trip pupils up when they're answering it. And the first one we're going to look at is this word differences. Now there's two parts to this A01 question. Identify the two components of the peripheral nervous system. And they've answered that in the first sentence. But then it says explain two differences in their functions. So if it says differences, you've got to make those differences really explicit to the moderator. You can't just outline them both. You can't just say the SNS controls skeletal muscle, the ANS controls internal organs, because that's not meeting the requirements of the question. The questions ask for differences, so therefore you've got to use key words in that sentence. Um, you've got to use maybe whereas, however, in contrast. So in this student's answers, I've highlighted where they've used whereas to show there's a clear difference between the two functions of these parts of the nervous system. So make sure if you see the word differences, you're making those differences really, really explicit. Another question that seems to trip pupils up is how. Now, if we look at this question here, outline how Lorenz and Harlow have studied attachment using animals. If a question asks you for how, just circle it straight away and write the word method or methodology above it. Because only methodology points will get you marks in this sort of question. You will get no marks for any findings. For example, if we look at the bottom paragraph about Harlow here, it talks about the two different conditions, the wire, the cloth mother. It's got Harlow recorded the time spent with each of them, their fear response, long-term effects as well that he recorded. And as you can see in both of these paragraphs, there is no findings from the studies at all. It is all linked to the methodology of Lorenz and Harlow. So make sure if you see the word how, it only refer to methodology in your answer. Now next, some questions will ask you for two parts of information. It's so important that you highlight those two parts of your answer. So this one will ask you to identify two glands. And as you can see, this student's done it here in underlined in red. And it also asks you to outline their functions as well. So if you don't highlight these parts of the question, you may well miss the second part of the question and won't be able to access the full marks that are available. So make sure that you always go over, highlight however many different, and realize how many different parts each question has before you go on answering it. Now, another question that can trip people up in A1 is when it looks at research. 
Now this says, describe what research with Romanian orphans has shown about the effects of institutionalization. Now this student shows some great knowledge of Rutter's study, looking at IQ in the first paragraph and disinhibited attachment in the second paragraph. Now I'm not gonna spend ages going through these answers. If you wanna pause it and have a read of the answer yourself in your own time, absolutely fine. But what I wanna get across to you is giving the findings is great and it does show good knowledge. But whenever you give the findings of a study, if it's A01 or A03, you must always let the moderator know that you understand what we've learned from that. So this is where the importance of using a sort of sentence starter such as this shows that, or this suggests that. And as you can see in each of these paragraphs, I've underlined it in red, this student has linked back to what we have learned from the findings. This is what's happened to their IQ. This is what we've learned as a result of it. So that's really important anytime you write any research findings in any of your answers. Now the next tip might seem a little bit obvious, but it can make a massive, massive difference. Working out how much each question is worth. So this question here about depression and CBT is a four mark question. So I'll be suggesting to my students, you should be doing two of the strategies. Pick two and elaborate on each of those. Now you could go into a different way. You could look at four separate points to get four marks and use four different strategies, that's fine. But it's incredibly hard to get four marks from one particular point. So always pick at least two and then elaborate on them. Layout of your paragraphs is so, so important. If we look at this A01 question, outline the biological explanation of OCD. You can see these students answered their question and linked everything they wanted to talk about genetics in one paragraph. So they've talked about the COMT gene, they've talked about the SERT gene, and the information in there is really, really good. And it's all been contained in that one paragraph. Now, if they were writing maybe an extended 16 mark answer, for example, I would suggest they leave a blank line underneath this, and then in the next line underneath, start their neural explanation, just so it keeps everything nicely laid out, nice and clear, nice and organized for both yourself and the moderator who will be marking your answer. Another way you could lay out your answer is to start each new point on a new line. So we've got here the CBT and depression. This person has got three different strategies in their answer and each one starts on a new line. And the information is all correct in there. And as a student, they'd be able to see, right, I've made at least three points. Some of these are elaborated a bit more, being able to get me up to that four marks that are available for this particular question. Now, you don't have to lay out your answers like this in any way, but it does help those of you who are maybe writing an awful lot, awful lot but never making enough points to get the full marks available. So this should help you realize, right, I've made a point, I'm gonna move on to a new sentence. I've made my point, I'm gonna move on to a new sentence. It's not like using bullet points where you're just making revision notes. This is all still fully extended answers, fully extended sentences. They're just starting on a new sentence each time you make a new point. Now, another key thing to do when you're doing A01 questions is to always link back to the question. So if the question was about outlining the biological explanation for OCD, you've got to ensure that you are always linking back to OCD as much as you can. Now, if we look at this paragraph here, it's about biochemical abnormalities, and they've talked about low levels of serotonin and high levels of dopamine. Now, for me as a teacher, I always think those points are a little bit basic because you cover serotonin and dopamine so much throughout the course. So what would be a far better answer would be, how do you know serotonin is involved in OCD? And that's where we've got that little bit underlined in red. So it's not just saying low levels of serotonin, but we're starting to link back to OCD in more detail. So this is based on the finding that when people with OCD are given antidepressants, which increase their serotonin levels, their symptoms are reduced. So this student has started to not only tell me low levels of serotonin, but they've started to link it to OCD as well. And finally, a question that we've also looked at earlier about Romanian orphan studies. Again, this student's outlined their knowledge again of another part of the Romanian orphan studies where we've got brain scans and decreased activity in their prefrontal cortex. Great finding. But 
they're also linking back to the question, what does this then show us about institutionalization? So that link back to the question, okay, it was concluded that this dysfunction in these parts of the brain that resulted from the early stress of deprivation may be linked to the long-term cognitive and behavioral issues. So they're starting to give a finding and then they're linking back to the actual question. What have we learned about institutionalization as a result of Romanian orphan studies? So the last thing I'm going to talk about quickly is just how to practice AO1. So the first thing you should be doing is doing past paper questions under exam conditions. Time yourself. Four marker, give yourself four minutes. Can you write out that quickly? Then you've got to get feedback, whether that's from yourself using the mark schemes, your friends, ideally a teacher to give you some real detailed feedback on how you performed in that question. But what I also think is really important is often missed by a lot of students is the importance of examiner reports. Now, examiner reports are produced by AQA at the end of every exam series, and they'll tell you what students did well, what they didn't do well. And that's really powerful information for you to base your revision and your exam style answers for when you move forward in this summer's exams. Now, also, if you do a question, again, try it three days later, a week later, to try and see if you'd included any of that information that you maybe missed out the first time. Were you able to include it in your answer? If not, try it again a week later until you're able to write out really strong answers, including all of that information that maybe you missed out the very first time you answered it. Hope you found that video useful and I'll be putting together some how to answer AO2 and AO3 questions quite shortly.